You're listening to The Blind Chick, an Aftersight original podcast. We're telling you stories about strength, overcoming hurdles, and living experiences. We see who you really are. Blindness can be an adventure. Are you ready for the journey of a lifetime? We are. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to The Blind Chick. You are listening to part two with Paula Kissinger and Penn Street and Moses Street. It has been a fantastic time in part one. So go back and check out part one if you missed it. But here's part two. I hope you guys enjoy it. I know I did. Well, this is, this is, uh, what are some of the other sports? Cause th- th- this is to, uh, you know, more magic tricks to blow people away because <laughs> you've, you've done a lot of sports. Yeah. I was a competitive swimmer in high mm. school. I was a competitive horseback rider basically my entire life. I was a trail guide in, uh, Colorado for a summer on a dude ranch with 60 head of horses and 80 head of cattle. Wow. Um, Wow. I I'm a runner. I uh tandem bike with my dad. He's a triathlete, so that's easy for him. <laughs> so you're not um, really pedaling. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> well, okay, I've got a question since I I doubt that you could do any of that. How how do you do echolocation in the swimming pool? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really hard because it just doesn't it, carry it does. like it does. It come under the water. unless you're no. a dolphin. <laughs> if you're a dolphin, you just yeah. need to squeak louder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, for anyone who's who might want to try it, I can see the T at the end of the lens, mm. so that's easy. But for anyone who can't. There are these things called tap sticks that you can either have someone sit at the end of the lane and just do a little tap on your head when you get close to the wall, or even better, I have seen people hang a tennis ball from a string on the dive blocks oh, so they can feel it touch them before they hit the wall. There are ways. Yeah, I have I have just got into swimming um, more for medical stuff. I have a bunch of medical cred going on, and swimming was like a better alternative than some of the other sports I was doing. It's so it good is, for but you. it was that um, I have hit my head <laughs> so many times on the on the edge, and even my instructor, I don't know what she she doesn't like tell me. Oh, you're like <laughs> so we we have yeah. sort of come up with a. Uh, thing I still hit my head occasionally, but not as bad. But but it is. I think swimming is an incredible. Besides sport, it's an incredible exercise, and it's the safest because usually there's somebody around if you start drowning. Hopefully, but <laughs> but it's to me swimming is super tactile. Um, like, you know, like, like once you do get the stroke, like when, if you have a good instructor you and, and they're good about teaching you tactfully how to, how to do the stroke, you, it's just like mm-hmm. anything on land. You kind of know, like, oops, I did that wrong or that doesn't feel quite right. And, um, and you can also tell by the movement in the water, right? Like if you're doing it wrong, you're struggling, <laughs> whereas if you're doing it correctly, you're, you're moving more smoothly. And it's, I think it's, it's definitely not the adrenaline rush as, um, skiing, but it's, it, it is a way, it is a definitely a sport that you can completely, and an exercise that you can do completely independently. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, and usually there's a pool like pretty close. Like I, you know, I don't, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure there's some people out there that, you know, maybe there isn't a pool close by, but I, I always do recommend swimming to blind and low vision people because yeah. it is such yeah. a great, and it doesn't matter how tiny you are or how big you are, um, what your, no. and what your ability is like, um, like none of that, like, even if you have other health issues, it's, it's something I feel like pretty much everybody can do. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, you can't necessarily 
swim like with a, a regular yeah. stroke. They're like physical therapists that prescribe just walking in the water where you can still touch, but just for that it's resistance, true. it's so good for your body. And anyone can yeah. do that. And being yes. in water, submerged in water, to me is healing. Like, um, it's just, and, and like people who have balance issues, like you said, there's all these adaptive ways, you know, you can hang on to, you know, a kickboard or something that helps. Like there's just, just so many adaptive tools that, that can, and, and you do, yeah. I mean, I've known so many people that started out like just swimming for exercise or, you know, like, you know, that took somebody's advice, like, oh, okay, that's, that's an activity I can do independently. And um, I don't need a guide or anything. And then they end up competing because they realize, (laughs) oh, I can actually do this. Do you, um, one of the things I'm still pretty, I mean, we, we went to Costa Rica a few months ago, and it was the first time being in the ocean after my swimming lessons and I did feel so much more confident and, and in myself and stuff, but I still, um, had this fear of going out over my head. (laughs) Um, and it's because I can't see, then I, then I would lose because I wanted to be able to be close enough that I could hear the beach um, and yeah. and know which way to swim, kind of like Moses, which way is the top? Well, which way is the safety zone? Because you can't always trust the waves down there that they're going towards the beach because, you know, no. we were at the where we were, there was this big river and it sell in it and the river itself created different currents and stuff. So you really couldn't trust like oh well the wave will push me towards shore no if you're near close enough to the river it would be pushing you out (laughs) so um do you how do you feel like what are some of your tips about swimming in the ocean frankly i'm more in your camp in the ocean i get nervous in the ocean as well because i was actually in costa rica last year as well and there the ocean that push you down, down yes. shore, <laughs> up shore, further out. And again, I don't have depth perception. I can't tell how far I am right. from the beach. I can't see detail on the beach to know if I'm being pushed one way or another. So honestly, that's where I just stick very close to someone mm-hmm. else. Um, <laughs> I'm Usually it's my sister. Um, she's also the better ski guide out of my entire family. Don't tell my parents. <laughs> but um, she's also a great ocean guide, which is a title she has not gotten until now. So ocean uh-huh. guide. Um, I just stick with somebody as long as they can see the shore and know we're in a good good lineup. I'm good. It's also for me. I get nervous in the ocean because I can't see what's on yes. the ocean floor underneath me. Um, and you know, you were yeah. in Costa Rica, there are stairs, there are yes. corals, there are sea yeah. urchins, things like that. So I tend to be much more conservative in oceans mm-hmm. than I would be in my regular everyday life about having someone near me who can see, but different people are going to have different comfort levels. I also didn't grow up swimming in the ocean, so I'm sure that has something to yeah. do with it. Yeah, I wonder too if that's that could be. And also I've had some scary situations in the ocean that kind of like <laughs> and now I have PTSD about it. But um but yeah, and I guess it's I I mean even when Moses goes out surfing, um he 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 never goes out where there's not other people. Like he always like he he's yeah. like makes sure that there's yeah. other surfers out there and I guess that's true in most sports that you sh- you it's a good rule of thumb for anyone yeah. I think. And going along with that hiking, um you know, you I know you grew up hiking as well. What what were some of the oh, adaptive yeah. ways that you that you hike because you don't, I don't have depth. Per- I haven't had depth perception since I was nine. So I kind of came up with all these different tricks too, but what are some of the ones yeah. that you use? Um, my favorite one is just to have somebody hike mm. in front of me. 
then you don't need depth perception because I can see if their head goes up or down. <laughs> if they step up on a rock, that's, that's all I really need. Um, if I'm hiking alone, I just hike a lot slower and do the little toe taps. I'm yeah, sure you know that yeah. one. Um, and then a big one that helps me in lots of aspects of life is memory. Yeah. I will hike the trail and memorize the route on though the slopes on though the rocks where it's loose gravel things like that um my memory has served me very well in all all aspects yeah. of my life and that's that's definitely one yeah. of them you familiarize yourself with the terrain and after a while you don't trip on that rock for the yes, first time I, that definitely <laughs> i do that do you use trick pulls so i don't i I know lots of people use them and I can see how they would be really yeah. helpful. Um, I've adapted yeah. well to saving myself and catching myself. <laughs> and frankly, I think they would get in the way more for me personally, but that's just me. Um, I also like to run on trails and it's really hard yes. to run with, with those. So I just walk them a couple of times to figure out again where those little gotcha rock star <laughs> and, then, and then i'm pretty good yeah that's awesome yeah that was i i got to go through pen learning how to hike uh <laughs> And when we first started, you know, it was really, really, really slow going. Uh, but yeah. it didn't take that long until we would be on uh, uh, hikes and she's out hiking every speed wise, everybody on the trail. <laughs> and and oh, yeah. that really blows people away. <laughs> so. Well, and I love I love hiking because. Again, once you know the trail and you're confident, you get to be in nature and not have as much as we love our, our guides telling us where everything is and where we need to go. It's nice to just hear the birds chirp, listen to yeah. the leaves rustle, just to have that serenity in nature and not have to have anyone help you figure out where yeah. you're going to go. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like being in a pool or, or on skis or running on a horse. It's that freedom. Yeah that you can just enjoy. Yeah. Paula, how do you feel that overcoming all these fears and adaptations and in in sports, how did how do you feel that that sort of spilled over in like your career choices or relationship choices? Like do you think that what you learned from sports helped support the rest of the areas of your life? Absolutely. In a huge way. Um, I think it's made me <laughs> very stubborn <laughs> in a good way because I've had to persevere. Mm -hmm. You learn that you have to work harder. You have to put in more effort. You have to try different approaches. And yeah, that's a harsh reality, especially as a kid that you have to work harder than other people. And yeah, it's unfair, yeah. but it also teaches you that if you do, you will get that payoff at the end. You will be able to do things that you couldn't do before. And yes, I think it's, I think it's impacted my life choices, my career choices. Um, I'm headed to law school oh, next year. Congratulations. I hope. I'm applications now. Um, I think if I hadn't had those experiences where I had to work really mm -hmm. hard, I don't think I would have the confidence to to do that. Um, I think it's really important for kids as, as harsh as those lessons are. I know I'm not going to discount how difficult it is. I think it's really important for kids with any kind of impairment, mm -hmm. any kind of challenge to learn to work through that yeah. and to learn what they can and can't do because yeah, there are some things I can't do. I'm not going to become a pilot that would be a poor career choice, <laughs> but I can go to law school and be an attorney. Yeah. Is it going to be a ton yeah. of work? Yes. But learning to figure things out for myself allows me to work that hard and allows me to make those choices. So yeah, I think whether it's through sports or something else, it's really important that, that kids learn how to, 
how to push through those struggles. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think I came up with this quote, but I, it definitely goes through my head a lot when I'm, especially when I'm learning something new is if you never, ever fall down, you will never, ever know what it takes to get back up. And it's, yep. it's, it is true, you know, and it's, you know, it's not fun. I'm sure it's not fun for parents <laughs> to watch their no. kids struggle. And, but uh, I just, um, it, it's just so important that they, they learn those skills. Cause I agree with you. I think that it does help with all aspects, even in relationships, you know, it's like, you know, you meet somebody and you think they're going to be the love of your life for the rest of your life. And then, you know, it ends up not being so. Well, if you've never experienced um, a loss or a, a stumble, it's going to hurt. You'll be so much more lost, right? Versus if you kind of yeah. grew up, oh, I fell down, but I can get back up. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Or this hurts, but it's only going to hurt for a short period of time. And then it's actually going to, I'm going to be stronger because I learned from it. And I, I see especially parents with kiddos that are blind, low vision, or any disability, like, you know, kind of be that helicopter parent and not, um, not let their kiddos learn that experience of totally. falling. I, I ended up working at a bunch of these uh, sports camps for, yeah. for kids with visual impairments after I was an athlete at them for many, many yeah. years. And frankly, the difference in independent skills, social skills, just general, basic everyday tasks in the kids with the helicopter yeah. parents. And by the way, I don't blame parents for that. Yeah. It's hard. I don't claim to know what it's like being a parent. That's hard. I don't blame yeah. them at all. Yeah. But the difference with the helicopter parent children versus the parents who let their kids struggle, let them fall. Yeah. <laughs> My poor parents probably feared Child Protective <laughs> Services was going to get called on them. And they, I was covered in bruises and contusions yes. all the time because <laughs> I wanted to go play. And yeah, I fell and smacked my head yeah. on some stuff. Um, but the difference in those kids' independence and social skills is huge, yeah. huge. And that will serve them really well for the rest of their yeah. lives. So, yeah, it's really hard to let, let those kids fall and, and get hurt and struggle, but it's also really yeah, important. That's for sure. Yeah, that that was really a hard one when Penn and I, we've, we've been together 37 years, but in the early days, what was really hard is Penn was always covered in bruises. <laughs> <laughs> and and there I was, the spouse standing next to her with all those bruises on her, and so I was constantly going, "I didn't do it! I didn't do it!" <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, no, seriously, my poor mother would drop me off at school in like elementary school, and I'm covered yes. in bruises and cuts. <laughs> she really thought there was, it was like a she went bike riding this weekend. What can I say? <laughs> That's yeah, right. No. And, and and then my would get to know me and they'd be like, yeah, she did that to yeah, herself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and we've only got time for one more big adventure. Uh, and this one's near and dear to my heart. You worked on a cattle ranch. I did, yes. <laughs> and what did you do there? Because I, I, there was a, uh, well, being up in Estes Park, a lot of my friends were cowboys. And and I got, I got to do a cattle drive and the branding and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, a lot of trail rides. And uh, so fill us in on what you did and, and any misadventures. Oh my god! Oh, where, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of which stories I can tell that won't get me in trouble. <laughs> okay. um, but yes, I worked on a dude ranch for a summer job in college. It was such a good time. Um, oh. It was also a working cattle ranch, so I've done many a cattle drive. Um, <laughs> I've been and. Also, I was a trail guide. Yes, yeah. you heard that correctly. <laughs> I was a trail guide for death going out into the wilderness. Yep. Um, 
I think a, a really good story is that someone, one of my neighbors, their family, their extended family had come up to the ranch. So they said, oh, you should go out with our, our neighbor. Um, so I took them out on a trail ride and it was a, a family and their two kids and we had a great time. And we come back and they're, you know, getting off their horses and everyone's happy. And then the mother taps me on the shoulder and she goes, wait, our, 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 our family who, who said she's your neighbor, they thought that you had a vision impairment, but that must be your sister, right? <laughs> You're like, yeah, it was my sister. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I laughed very hard and said, no, nope. <laughs> that's me. She went. Why does she? Because I had just taken her two children out on a trail ride. <laughs> I promise <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That is so awesome. Well, Paula, what would you like um, people to walk away with today? We have people from all over the world out there sitting in all different kinds of situations in their lives. And what would you like them to to get from this episode? I mean, just generally, I think that regardless of what situation you're in, there's, there's usually a way to, to achieve whatever you want mm -hmm. to. Um, like I said, there's some limitations. I'm not going to be a pilot, but <laughs> could I go <laughs> run a marathon or do you know, something incredible with a scientific breakthrough or become an yeah. attorney. Yeah. So I think just to have big aspirations and to know that you're going to work really hard and that's part of the beauty of it. And that should never hold that's you back. Awesome. It's awesome advice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, oh, this is, oh, oh, the big one. Okay. Uh, how can people find out more about you and how to learn more about adaptive sports? Yeah, um, I would say get involved in a program because there's tons of, of nonprofits. Um, if you're in the Colorado area and you want to ski, Ignite is a fantastic mm -hmm. one or Foresight. If you um, are a runner, Achilles yes. is a international running group that um, sets up guides with people who need them. It's a fantastic group. Um, if you're looking for something in a different sport or a different area completely, I guarantee there's a program in your area. So get involved with it. Um, and it's, it's probably going to be a good experience. You're going to meet really cool people and learn a lot. That's right. And we do have yeah. on aftersight.org, we actually do have, um, a lot of resources and services for adaptive sports. And then we also, at Aftersight, we have an incredible podcast called Game Changers, and you can get it anywhere. And I believe, I don't, I don't were you on Game Changers, Paula? I was, okay, yeah. so Paula was on there, and she really dives more, even more into her sports experience and, 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 um, how we can adapt sports so that we can all be part of them. Um, but I, I agree, Paula, like there's, there's, and, and even if you don't live in Colorado, a lot of the, not just Colorado, but a lot of the adaptive ski programs, they have special um, training camps and stuff during the winter. It, you don't have to live in that state. They they and they have wonderful scholarships and and things like that. So yep. or judo, you know, um, even if you find a place that you know teaches judo, but they don't know how to do it adaptively. Um, you, there's lots of um, resources and services out there that can probably give them advice. So don't let that stop you. Uh, or do what I did, and you can train them how to train there you. you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's good. Really not, it's not that hard. You can do it. Train them That's how right. to train you. That's right. That That is the best advice I have heard. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, take it into your own hands and tell people what you need. 
Exactly. Yep. Uh, I, I, I actually started using that in photography because so many people dislike being photographed. And, and <laughs> so I spend uh, a lot of time uh, pulling out of them uh, what do they need uh, and mm. what specifically do controls do they need to be totally comfortable? And it works so much better than traditional portrait photography. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, Paula, it's 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 yeah. sad to say goodbye. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for for being on the blind chick, and I know that I'm sure you've inspired a lot of parents out there, um, as well as potential athletes out there, or just get off your butt, get off the couch. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Regardless right. if you're blind yeah. or low vision, just get yeah. outside if you can, or if you can't, just. Try Try moving in your chair where you are right now. Um, totally. <laughs> but Paul. That's right. But Paul. And, and it, it has been wonderful talking to you. And we're going to have to get uh, Jonathan to add the Rocky theme since you're in yeah. uh, Philadelphia <laughs> for, for ending this. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. So much. It's oh, been fun. wonderful, Paula. And I, I can't wait to check back in with you. Um, you know, once you're in law school, you've graduated, you've passed the bar. Um, I'm sure our path, well, I hope our paths just, you know, <laughs> cross us as friends and not yeah. that I need you. <laughs> okay. Legal thing. Well, and I'll be back in Colorado. Awesome. I guarantee awesome. that's still home. Wonderful. Oh, you guys could go, you guys got to go skiing together. Yes, she, it sounds like she'd oh, totally yeah. outski me, but that's. <laughs> oh, stop. I'll do blues all day. I don't that's care. <laughs> that would be wonderful to head up to to the slips with you um also just thank everybody out there for um coming back week after week to the blind chick we love all of you and and thanks for sharing thanks for giving us a five-star rating um tell your friends about us it's it, that's absolutely wonderful and also as always thanks to after sight you are the rock that holds up this podcast we couldn't do it without you and everybody out there be kind to yourselves this week and find a way to be kind to somebody else it's good for your soul and we will see you next week. Bye.